Hey, what's going on there guys? You've officially arrived at the 420 scene and today we're gonna to be going over a new compost tea recipe that I've been kind of perfecting and working on since the beginning of the year. But first, show some love and support by watching the entire video, dropping a like, subscribing, and tapping the post notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And also be sure to join our VIP Patreon program for giveaways, tips, one-on-ones, early access, live streams, a lot of other cool stuff. Link is gonna be right down below and in the pinned message at the bottom. So I'm sure a lot of you guys guys have seen the compost tea recipe video that I came out like it was about a year ago I know I know a lot of people really liked it I've had a lot of good feedback on it but I wanted to perfect it a little bit more I wanted to give you kind of a new recipe that's going to be this year's recipe so a lot of you guys could take advantage of using this compost tea recipe so at the end of the video I'm going to show you what the final product is going to look like when you have everything all brewing and you know all that stuff because I've been using this for my Girl Scout cookies run and I've been having absolutely excellent results a lot of you guys on discord already know that's why i always tell you guys make sure that you join us on discord because a lot of the stuff that we make videos on and talk about i do make a lot of references because a lot of us are in the discord community so that's why we can kind of you know we can talk about what's going on with discord and kind of relate it to what we're going to be making videos on i'm going to be doing things a little bit differently this time around if you do want to actually see me making the compost tea itself you can always check out the original compost tea recipe video that i did maybe like a year ago. All right, so without further ado, let's talk about what you need and the ratio amounts, all that stuff. Now, some of you guys have been asking questions about what kind of pump that I use. And this is the Unic Life Active Aqua. You can get this at your local hydroponics shop. They have different ones. They have ones that you can put two hoses. I think they even have one for one hose, but I got the one for four. I know they got another Unic Life where you can put eight hoses on here, but if you're running in like a five gallon container, that's what I'm running in. Something like this with four hoses is gonna do the trick. I have not seen this on Amazon, so I don't think you can get this exact model, the Unic Life on Amazon. I only found it in every hydroponic shop that I've gone to. So if you want a Unic Life, you might have to go to your hydro store. Now the next thing that you guys are gonna need is obviously cheesecloth. You can use a sock. I know some people like using a sock. This is really cheap. I'm not sure what the Amazon prices are now because I got this from Hobby Lobby. I don't know if there's a Hobby Lobby in your area. If you wanna get cheesecloth, I've gone to grocery stores and I haven't been able to find it, but if you go to your local arts and crafts store, you could pick up like six feet of this for maybe $5. And you know, all, all you're gonna need is some garden twine, you know, something to tie this up. So what you do is you cut out the fabric that you need, put all the stuff that you need on it, and then kind of, you know, tie it off and then that's all you need, you know what I'm saying? You don't need to actually get the cheesecloth bag as long as you get the cheesecloth or a sock, you know, it depends, whatever you guys wanna do. A sock is gonna be just as effective as cheesecloth if you wanna go the cheaper route. Me personally, I like this cheesecloth, it's really good. This brand is Soology. So let's just say you got everything set up, you got your air pump all set up, and you know, you got your air stones in there. I didn't have that in the video, but you know, you just pick up whatever air stones in your local hydroponic shop that's gonna be good. And the first thing you're gonna to have to add is the organic black strap molasses. Now this is some really good stuff, it's got a combination. This is is pretty much like your CalMag, okay? A lot of people don't realize it because I see, you know, everybody's using the Epsom salt, which there's nothing wrong with using Epsom salt because it's got your mags. There's nothing wrong with using crab meal or oyster shell. You got your calcium right there. But this, this is the Plantation Organic Unsulfured Blackstrap Molasses, and this has calcium, it's got magnesium, it's got iron, and it's got potassium in it. So you got a little bit of everything going on here. So for the purpose of this video, we're gonna be working as if we're going with a five gallon bucket with four to four and a half gallons. Obviously you're not gonna have full five gallons, you know what I mean? There's gonna be a lot of spillage going on here. So with the organic blackstrap molasses, I like to use four tablespoons, just straight up four tablespoons and just, just kind of mix it in the water with you know, your tablespoon or whatnot. And uh, this is good stuff. This is absolutely good stuff. I know I rave about the plantation or even just the blackstrap molasses itself, but this is the first thing that you gotta add before you add anything else. The next thing you want is kelp meal. This is really important when it comes to your roots absorbing nutrients. So this helps with nutrient uptake. It's great for root development. So as far as the down earth kelp meal, two tablespoons is what I add to my compost tea. The next thing you can add is down to earth fishbone meal. Now, if you guys 
guys watch the original recipe that I did, I was using seabird guano. So let's just say you don't have the seabird guano. Fishbone meal is gonna be an excellent replacement. I, I think the seabird guano, the NPK ratio is like 0 11 0 or 0 12 0, something like that. And this is 3 16 0. This is really heavy on the phosphorus, got a little bit of nitrogen in there. And this is really good, especially if you're going into the flowering stage and you wanna get that phosphorus intake going. Fishbone meal is where it's at. Now, of course, all the products that I'm gonna be showing you, the amendments that you're gonna be putting in to your cheesecloth bag for your compost tea is gonna be from down the earth, just because I feel like they're the best company when it comes to dry amendments, personally. Now for the down to earth fishbone meal, go with one tablespoon, that's all you need. The next thing to go with is down to earth alfalfa meal. I've been using this since the very first time I've tried doing my compost tea recipe. I saw a few people using the alfalfa meal, I figured I would try it out. Now what alfalfa meal is, it gives a decent supply of nitrogen. I know the NPK ratio is 2.5, 0.5, 2.5. So it's got kind of a little bit of everything, not really that much phosphorus. So it's got a decent amount of potassium and nitrogen. And from what I've read, because I still don't fully know why alfalfa meal is good. I do use alfalfa as a cover crop. And what that does is it pretty much sucks the nitrogen from the air supposedly. And then it kind of, makes it readily available for your plants to use that nitrogen. So I'm assuming this is kind of like the same thing, except in the tea format, obviously. Now the alfalfa meal, I like to go with two tablespoons. Now last but not least is bat guano. Now this has a little bit of everything. It's got a good supply of nitrogen intake. It's got phosphorus and it's got potassium. It's kind of a good all around fertilizer, I guess you could say. Now this is similar to worm castings in the sense that it's got kind of the same amendments in it, but this is more concentrated than worm castings. So what you can do is you can split. So let's just say you don't have worm castings, but you got bat guano. What you can do is pretty much cut your ratio in half or like one third, you can give this bat guano. So for the compost tea recipe, this calls for one tablespoon for the bat guano. Now I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's brewing. Now you wanna brew this stuff for 30, to 36 hours. I kind of was experimenting between 24 hours and 48 hours because I heard you know you should go with either 24 to 48 hours. So I kind of like to split that down the middle, 30 to 36 hours. I feel like that way you're locked in right in the middle of what you should be. You know, I'm kind of weird when it comes to stuff like that. I don't like the 24, but I don't like the 48 because I don't want to do it too early. I don't want to do it too late. So if you ask me for my recommendation, have the stuff brewing for 30 to 36 hours. The compost tea recipe works if you have a schedule. So let's just say you know that you have to water in a day and a half. That's when you want to start brewing that compost tea. So the time when you normally would water your plants, you already know that you got your day and a half. So this requires a little bit of planning when you're trying to work with your compost tea. Never start brewing compost tea unless you have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you might give it a little bit too early. You might give it a little bit too late. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I like to do. So for example, let's just say it's noon, but I know I'm gonna be watering the next day. Now my lights come on around six o'clock, so I like to wait at least an hour. What I would do is I would start brewing at noon the following day, so that way by seven o'clock the next day, I already know my compost tea is gonna be ready to administer to my plants. So that's all I'm saying. It just requires a little bit of preparation. So just as a recap, I wanna make sure everybody knows how much of what they're gonna be using. Blackstrap molasses, four tablespoons. The down earth bat guano, one tablespoon. The kelp meal, two tablespoons. Fishbone meal, one tablespoon. And alfalfa meal, two tablespoons. Now, of course, guys, this is if you're working in a five gallon bucket and you're trying to use four to four and a half gallons of water on this. Obviously, if you're using a bigger container, like let's just say you're using a 10 gallon container, then you know, you're gonna be upping the dosage. So guys, try out this new compost tea recipe. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. Let me know on Discord. Be sure to be following us on Discord. Follow us on Patreon. You guys all get the inside scoop before everybody else. So again, let me know if it works out for you. And and you know, if there's something that I've been working on that I find is a complete success, I'm gonna be passing that information on to you guys because I want you guys to succeed. I don't wanna hide any kind of secrets or grow secrets, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want everybody to have an equal opportunity to get some really good flour. Kind of a sidebar here. I started this channel because it took me 10 years to figure out what I need to do and you know, I've been just kind of practicing, practicing, practicing. The resources that are available now I didn't have. It's not like I was able to ask people questions. I never asked anybody any questions. I never looked at forums. I kind of just 
got everything that I needed. I watched a few YouTube videos and then I just kind of started experimenting. I didn't really want to watch too many people at the time, so I kind of just was experimenting like for 10 years, you know what I'm saying? So I want to give this information to you guys so it doesn't take you 10 years to figure out all these different regimens. But just keep practicing your craft. You guys will always get better. I know some people are down about themselves, especially on Discord. You know who you are if I'm talking about you. If you're having a bad run, don't worry about it. It's just how mother nature works. Just keep practicing, get better. Find out what went wrong and then use that knowledge that you just gained and then just use that on your next run. And that's that's what gets the motivation juices flowing. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I don't want to keep rambling on. Before we close off today's video, I want to thank everyone on screen who's been supporting us on Patreon. I really appreciate the love and support. So I'm going to close out today's video. Be sure to drop a fat thumbs up, drop that fat like, and subscribe for more content. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. And as always, stay safe. Peace.